Another key element of the 3S formula for startup PR is storytelling. Essentially, this is content creation. It could be in text, it could be in video, it could be on a podcast, it could pretty much be in any media that you choose. And from my experience, there are basically two types of content that are foolproof and are going to be great for getting PR attention. The first is a funding round. So if you're the kind of startup that's getting venture capital, then you get your series C, your series D, your series B. That is 100% worthy of PR attention. Now, if something else happens in your company, like getting a new hire, and I remember speaking to a PR expert in Silicon Valley about this, and he was saying people are hiring people from credible companies all the time in Silicon Valley. So former employees from Google, from Twitter, et cetera. And he said, it's not really that newsworthy. Now in your niche, maybe it is more newsworthy. Uh, but if you're in Silicon Valley where there's a lot of huge tech companies and people are changing companies all the time, then uh, not really that worthy of attention. Now, the second type of foolproof content, I would say, is original research. So if you've done some sort of study that the industry is going to value, even if it's just surveying, say, 100 people in the industry, that kind of thing is very easy to get published, whether it's just in a, a guest webinar, maybe you're just a guest speaker on a podcast talking about your research. Uh, but this type of thing, this type of original research is, is very easy to get media attention. Now, to more generalize the types of PR content or stories that you can come up with, we're going to rely on the book Free PR. And the author has classified four categories of business stories. So the first is announcements. And later, we're going to talk about why announcements are one of the key aspects of copywriting that is the most likely to get attention from readers. So these are things like launching a new product or service, forming a new partnership, a new hire, maybe somebody that's famous, or most importantly, a, a new round of fundraising, as I mentioned earlier. So announcements are very time constrained, right? It's based around some sort of event that's happening, such as a product launch. But then we have evergreen stories. These are things like how you did it, how you built that product, how you built that empire, how you built that charitable arm of your company. It's going to be the story behind the story. It's going to be things like weird CEO rituals or fun aspects of your business or interesting aspects of your company culture, which might be particularly effective if you were trying to recruit employees. Next, we have seasonal things. So things that perhaps are associated with holidays. Maybe you did something like building robotic reindeer, or maybe you're an egg company or a company that makes mayonnaise. Well, something around Easter makes the most sense because it's very seasonal. If you're in retail and you get a quarter of your sales around Black Friday or Cyber Monday, uh, then particular stories are gonna be more relevant to the media around that time. And lastly, we have one content type for business stories that's completely under your, under your control, and that's stunts and events. And what you're doing here is you're capitalizing on some sort of an event, such as South by Southwest, or maybe it's a video game event or an industry event, and you're able to create some sort of stunt or attention-grabbing thing at the event. So for example, uh, SPCA puppies being brought to your show booth is going to be something that's going to garner a lot of media attention. So those are the four categories of business stories. Now, related to that is going to be five story angles, which also come from the book Free PR. So w once you've decided what kind of story is the is most relevant to your business, to your product, to your service, now it's how do you craft the narrative? Is the narrative overcoming adversity. This is going to be inspiring inspiring aspects or a backstory to your business. Is it going to be about culture? So things that set your company apart from competitors. That's the type of thing that a publication like Fast Company is going to be interested in publishing. Is it going to be a company endorsement? So things like overcoming problems or achieving success. Is it going to be about leveraging technology, which is going to be the kind of story angle that's appropriate for trendhunter.com or for TechCrunch? 
Or is the story angle going to be about the future? Maybe things like thought leadership, an inspirational future of where your company is headed, an origin story, the kind of thing that would get published on Wired or Fast Company. One of the key aspects of writing th these stories is going to be the power of new. Now, when a lot of people do copywriting, particularly when the beginning, it's all about positioning, benefits, features, value. How do you create value for customers? But the art of conveying that with something that's new is going to give it a lot more media worthiness. Because if you think about newspapers, you think about CNN, it's really about what's new, what's flashy. And Sometimes it's even about artificially making something seem new, even, even when it's not. So we see this all the time where old ideas are rebranded with new terms and suddenly everybody's excited about it, uh, even though it's, it's really, there's nothing new about it. What's new about it is that it's becoming popular again because of the different phrasing. So newness is very important when you're doing storytelling and when you're doing copywriting. And we know that from looking at the, classic copywriter John Caples. He's always talking about how uh, making something seem new is going to garner a lot of attention. We see that, for example, with Bang & Olufsen when they're doing videos on their newest audio premium speakers, introducing BO Sound Emerge. So introducing BO Sound Level, this language around introducing, announcing, or new with an exclamation point, uh, that's what energizes people and makes them want to pay attention to you instead of the crowd of competitors that uh, could just as well get attention. So when you write news about, for example, a new product launch, most publications may not care. So the New York Times is not going to care about your new widget. But within the very narrow niche that you're in, specialized publications might be very excited about uh, that new thing you're introducing. Another thing that's very effective with storytelling is using concrete visuals rather than nuanced, sophisticated language. And we see this all the time in the political space on both sides of the spectrum in the United States. So for example, Democrats have used this phrase over and over in the media as a soundbite, which is, we're going to defend every inch of NATO territory. Now, they could just use a literal explanation saying, we're going to protect article blah, 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 and defend every nation in NATO. But that isn't very concrete. It's more conceptual. Instead, they're making it visual. They're making it tangible every inch of NATO territory. And that really solidifies the message in people's minds. Now, on the other end of this political spectrum, they use this word, we're going to build a wall. And immediately in your mind, you're thinking of this giant physical wall. But in both of these instances, really what they're trying to convey is uh, something that's more conceptual, but using concrete terms to explain it. So for example, build a wall really means we're going to get hard on immigration and protect every niche of NATO territory basically means we're going to defend uh, every country affiliated with NATO. Politicians, people that are great at personal PR know this. They recognize people like very concrete visuals. And that's why, for example, politicians often want to invest in big infrastructure projects like a dam or a giant building because it gets attention and people don't forget things that are highly visual and tangible. We also see this with politicians in universities. They always wanna build a new building. Now, despite that a new building doesn't really help with education and that it takes a lot of time and a lot of resources, people that run universities know that if you build some big concrete symbol of your success, then people will remember you. So it's a very strong PR brick.